This is the Endgame Gear Xtreme microphone, a fuss-free, driverless, softwareless, and high-quality microphone designed for streamers, YouTubers, or even just regular people that want their callouts or insults to be delivered in crystal clear clarity. Does anybody want to come rush B with me? Just me? All right then. <laughs> I've personally used all sorts of microphones, Blue Yetis, Snowballs, and an Audio-Technica 2040, the list goes on. When I stream though, I want to plug in the microphone and that's it, so I'm going to be looking at this from a very lazy perspective. First, let's take a look at the design and the accessories that come with this, and it does come with a lot that's going to add to the value for money. Along with the microphone, you get a stand, shock mount, a magnetic pop filter, and a bit of acoustic foam, which I guess you could put in the box to make a small sound booth. I don't know if this is intentional or not, this is just my wacky idea. This also comes as it is, there's no assembly, actually that's a lie, I had to put the pop filter on. It does mean it comes in a rather large box in comparison to some other microphones, but it means that there's literally no effort required from my end. I just take it out, put the pop filter on and plug in the USB Type-C cable and it's ready to go. All the parts of this microphone do have a high quality to them, it just feels very sturdy, well made and there's very little fidgeting needing to be done to make adjustments. The default stand is quite small though, which seems to be a constant feature in many microphones. It could do with having an adjustable one that can be raised or lowered. You can attach it to a boom arm which I have done, it fits very well and it will make your audio sound a lot better as it will be closer to your mouth and further away from your keyboard. There's a knob which controls the gain of the microphone, there's even a light show that will let you know how loud something is, roughly. It's not meant to be a definitive meter whilst you're speaking so it is just a rough guide. Now let's move on to the sound test. Now what I'm going to say will shock you, as this is a twist in the tale that many would have never seen coming. You see, I have been using this microphone the whole time. As mentioned, I have been using it with a boom arm. I will show you what it looks like with the default stand. As it's a bit small though, it does hurt my neck having to lean over to actually get close to it. I'm old, so it's just one of those things. Anyway, I have not put any effort into this audio. I have left it completely raw. There's no funky post-processing, as again, this is from a lazy person's perspective. I want to put as little effort as possible in setting up this microphone. What you do get in terms of inbuilt post-processing is a small switch on the back that will turn on noise reduction. This little switch should really be on the front as it's quite difficult to reach at the back here, but I'll give you a test. So this is with noise reduction turned off. Yo bro, thanks for the $2,000 donation. I appreciate it. And now this is with noise reduction turned on. So same thing again. Thanks for the sub bro really appreciate it. Oh, never mind. That was my mum's account. Anyone got Prime? Any Primers? I need to pay my bills this month. Honestly, I find that the post-processing does kind of make things a little bit funky in terms of audio quality, but I guess that's just because it's trying to filter out noise whilst I'm chatting. Hopefully you're happy with the audio quality. I certainly am considering the amount of effort that I've put into setting this up, which is absolutely none. Honestly, I just think that this microphone could do a better stand, something that allows it to reach maybe this height that it's at, as honestly, the default stand is quite low, which I will show to you. So this is just the microphone sitting on the stand. It should pretty much sound okay. It does lose a bit of bass, I think. It just loses a little bit of clarity. Um, but obviously the downside is that you will hear more background noise. And this is what it is like with noise reduction turned on with the same background noise and aftermarket stand is probably going to be necessary to really make the use of the audio quality that this microphone can provide. But as I said, from a low effort quality standpoint, this is pretty decent. And there's also another neat feature, which is you can just press the microphone at the top, at the top, There you go, it's not working. You can just press it and it will mute the microphone. As you can tell, it's probably a little bit dodgy. Again, could this have just been a switch? Yeah, it probably could have. See, sometimes it just works completely fine, other times it doesn't. Some might be dying to hear about the RGB. Well, here it is, it's turned on. Great. 
So now we get to the price. It costs around about 150 dollars, 140 euros or 120 pounds at the time of this video, which to me is kind of reasonable considering you get a shock mount and a pop filter included. And the audio quality is pretty decent considering the low amount of effort required. The build quality on this is actually really good as well. It surpasses by far the Blue Yeti that I used to use. So honestly, I'd consider buying it as long as you have a boom mount to put it closer to your face. As a simple man, this microphone makes having decent audio quality achievable by little to no effort. So as I said, I'd highly recommend it because of that. There are a few things that I change as I mentioned, but honestly, as an all round product it is actually quite impressive. Thank you to Endgame Gear for sending this microphone out to me. And if you want to watch another Endgame Gear product that I reviewed, there will be an MPC Cordura pad up on screen now for you to watch.